seen his face twice or maybe twice and a half Eve at first or the first Eve she was my brokenness wrapped up in flesh my brokenness from a family warped and enmeshed her eyes said I will love you forever but her pain caused that to change every hour yet she was the beauty I beheld I was the beholder my undefined element called fire. We met in the garden. I met her garden. Nekiva meeting Zakar as a man that is hardened. I have met her in the past as Isha and Neshiyim. Ebony, Nubian, Empress, Menen. An ode to beauty, a sonnet of melanin. She was Eve at first or the first Eve. She came from me and I came from her. Kisses of honeydew sipped from each other's lips. I was me when I was joined to her hips. I have seen your face, Eve, sometimes stained with tears, apprehensive when apprehended by your fears, but mostly beaming with light. When my words became enfleshed in your mind, when I love you became the incarnated light, you were peace in every smile. Yet I must confess, please forgive me, Eve, for I have sinned, let me confess. The second Eve caused me to digress. I met her in the garden of loneliness, not so melanin-stained, but her beauty was African. Strength that would never relent, she made me weak to my former convictions and even some of my own pretense. Armed with brokenness of her own, she made my brokenness known. Eve even became flesh of my flesh and bone of another Adam's bone. Our love is despised by the pious, our piety despised by the religious. She was the same Eve. Even though she wore a different skin, brokenness found brokenness within, words were sharp to cut asunder, her embraces played melodies on my soul, she was my Eve even against the odds. She was in love but I loved her, her arrogance and sense of entitlement, I have seen her face, I have seen your face Eve. Wearing a daughter's shame, I have seen her face, I have seen your face Eve, I have seen your faces. Too strong to cry but adorned in pain, I have seen them, I have seen my Eves, I have seen you Eves. And where doubt lingers, I may have even seen another, or maybe I didn't and she's only something imagined, half human and half divine, her face hidden from the mire of my eyes and the lust therein. Her face defaced by a savior's sin, but that too may have just been something that I have imagined. A figure stolen from my imaginations, conjured in the halls of obscure hallucinations. I have seen her face, whether in my mind or otherwise. I have seen her face, half human and half in disguise. I have seen her face. I have seen your faces, Eves. I I have seen Eve, wishing that she was, I have seen Eve. Thank you very much. Yes, Massive and Crew, welcome again to the Ishden. I have a boy Robert, and as you can see, we're not again, boy I got good to you know, we're not in different spaces again. My brother decided to come on Mobile, I always say, yo, while he's in Mobile, let's just do, just do this, and... Make the people say we are real brother in a real life. I don't know. Talk. I don't, I don't just live service. Right? So you can see Napoleon in the studios yes. of FBN as yes. we record this one. Okay. Welcome, bro, bro. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So the last time, again, you know, because remember we had some technical difficulties. Yes. But technical difficulties always work out for our benefit. Right? So we are looking at a very crucial topic. Um, this month is actually family month mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we are looking at the male female relationship mm -hmm. not going to say the male versus no. female thing because there's no competition <laughs> right in the thing as napoleon said in the first 
episode, men are not from Mars and women are not from Venus. That's correct. We are created on Earth and as such, God has a mandate mm -hmm. for both Absolutely. genders, right, to fulfill. On right, earth. right here on earth right yes so right yes, yes. we are kingdom people yeah. so you're going to hear us say it over and over and over again the narrative has to begin in genesis chapter one and chapter two mm -hmm. right not in genesis chapter three because if you begin right so we go in a turmoil we go begin where sin has shaped yeah, yes. reshaped yeah. what god intended and guilt and shame and all of and yeah. accusations yeah. and all of those yeah right and we can't go last week we spoke about mm -hmm. self-forgiveness right and we are trying to let us know as men that yes some things happened to us yes we did some things and the negative impact of those things we have had to live with mm -hmm. but we can move into the freedom of god absolutely and the freedom of god begin by saying i forgive me absolutely right yeah. and we, we we're going to continue to sing that song because we understand that when self-forgiveness sets in, when we have walked through the process of self-forgiveness, and self-forgiveness is not excusing your wrongs, no. but it's owning them mm -hmm. and then moving beyond them. Absolutely. Right? And in that freedom, you can treat one right. Yeah. And that's what we try to look at. Mm. How do we relate to our female counterparts? Are they lesser than? Are they supposed to be under our feet? What is the kingdom perspective on this matter? How has the kingdom reframed this? And how should our thinking mm -hmm. towards women and our actions as well? How should these things work as a kingdom man? And we have to speak to the men in the street we as well. To. We have to. Right? We have to. Yeah. And so we, And we have to fix some of the things that we have done at church as, yeah, as well. Because yeah, yeah. The church fathers said some very, very <laughs> ugly things about our sisters. Yeah. In fact, they kind of set the, the narrative for how people understand um, women and especially women in church mm -hmm. and church women at home. Yeah. And a lot of that has been negative. Some have called women like the, the pit. Um, some, have, some have accused women of, okay, so Satan could not get to the man, so he used you. Mm -hmm. All of those negative things giving the impression that all of what happens because of of the woman yeah and again that's reading from genesis 3 yeah yeah, you know? yeah 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 and we tend to we tend to hear that from genesis 3 and that needs to be fixed mm -hmm. first of all from those in religious authority yeah to, to fix it because the story begins at genesis 1 and 2 and the narrative in terms of how we talk about it from Genesis 3 mm -hmm. also need to be fixed. Yeah. For instance, at Genesis 3, Adam is blaming. <laughs> is passing off blame. <laughs> I, never, I never hear Eve blame nobody. No. If you think of the narrative carefully. So, so it, is, it is a fight that is unnecessary. Yeah. It is a putting down that is uncalled for. And that needs to be fixed in how we, how we, we, we read and understand what God intends mm -hmm. for us um, as men and women. And, and, and you're right, in this month, we must have that conversation yeah, properly yeah, yeah. so that we are hearing clearly God's heart mm -hmm. and how we live that out in kingdom. Yeah, um, and it is always essential to determine where we are starting this conversation. Absolutely, from. absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. If you don't determine, if, if you start at a faulty point, yeah, man. it's going to be... Seldom Absolutely. that the conversation naturally corrects itself. Yeah, true, true. And, and, and just a little bit of side issue. Very often too, we, we talk about us as black people in terms of transatlantic <laughs> yeah, slaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we tend to forget our libraries in Addis Ababa. We, mm -hmm. we tend to forget some of the amazing things that we as a, as a race have accomplished and achieved. Yeah. And every time we center it, as if that is the only thing that can define yeah. us. No, I'm not saying it wasn't horrible. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. But just understand where the story for us actually began. Yeah. The cradle of civilization yeah. in so many significant ways. Same kind of narrative happens on this side. That needs to be fixed as well. Yeah. And we need to have that conversation. Yeah, man. Okay. Um, the black man conversation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because it, is, it is essential. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that we are going through, it, as a, it is as a result of us not going back to where we are from. Absolutely. Not I, looking on that narrative. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if, if we are flowing from the bitterness of the transatlantic yeah, nature, yeah, because yeah. nothing, I, I mean, I don't care if people want to say how the gospel came to mm -hmm, Africa because mm -hmm, of this, mm -hmm. right? That is nothing to celebrate. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If the reality is that we were tortured, we were chained like 
puss and dog and mm -hmm. rat and mm -hmm. hog mm -hmm. in the belly of some of these ships. Yeah, yeah. And you were chained to a man who died and him start decomposing. If you begin the narrative of our sojourn as Western Africans, yes, yes. there, boy, it now going to end. <laughs> it and we, end. we see it what's happening end. now. We see it especially. Right, we see what's happening in, now. In so we, we, we definitely need to look at that. Yeah, that between us start from February. Uh, so we could <laughs> to to, <laughs> deal with you know, but yeah, yeah. we are going to deal with that. Yeah. And we are saying again, the story of man and woman began in Genesis 1 and 2. And 2. Yeah. Made in his image. Yeah. Made equal dignity. Yeah. Equal respect. Equal authority. Mm -hmm. um, equal, equal in his image. Yeah. In every sense of the word. And so there is nothing in those narratives that should give anybody any impression that somehow one is superior to the other. Yeah, true. It's, it's equal dominion, if we read the text as presented to us. Mm -hmm. Equal in dominion. It's very and important. It doesn't often play out like that. No. In, our, in our, many of our church circles... It does not often play out like that. We say it, even yeah. in my church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We say that male and female mm -hmm. are equal. Mm -hmm. We treat them equal on a localized level, but yeah. you have never had a female superintendent of our yeah. fellowship. Yes. So, I don't know if religiously, or however it, it yeah, plays yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it says to me that over 80 years of existence, mm -hmm. a woman has never risen to the top. Mm. And that to me may be... Yeah, we, we claim to believe it, mm -hmm. but somehow it's not it's working out it's yeah, manifesting. As, 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 as it should. Yeah. Austin made a point in the first um, program mm -hmm. that we want to come, because Austin does believe this, yes. right? But he made the point that there are differences. Yeah. If Flojo, who is the fastest woman ever, and we're not going to go into how she became the fastest woman ever, <laughs> yes. but if she was qualifying with the males to run in the Olympics, mm -hmm. her time being 10.4 something in the mm -hmm. 100 meter mm -hmm. would not have qualified her because the men, the slowest men qualifying were Faster. running at 10.3 at, um, mm -hmm. plus. Yeah. So there are differences. Yeah, there yeah. are noticeable differences in how the male and the female yeah, are. The double NBA, mm -hmm. um, NBA mm -hmm. players can't compete in the NBA. Uh, absolutely. The female FIFA Olympi um, FIFA World Cup players cannot compete in the men's the men's right, World Cup. Right, right. right. So what do these differences say? How should we treat these differences? Uh, we have to celebrate the differences because the differences complement us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to see them in a complementary mm -hmm. way, rather than an attempt to to say these differences separate us and and cause us to function away from each other. Rather than understanding that the fact that generally yeah. men are stronger um, is something to to use to, to dominate and so on. Um, so we have to be careful of it. The differences such as they are, are intended to help us to, to, to complement each other mm -hmm. in our respective roles. Men will not be able to, to have children via a <laughs> womb. We yeah. understand that. So there are physical differences. And we're also saying that if there are physical differences, there are also going to be emotional differences. Yeah, true. Different how men treat with issues, um, differently from, from how women treat with issues. Mm -hmm. So so my wife will say to me, I need that curtain hung. No, or can you hang this curtain for me? I may say, may I go do it? Yeah. And she just pick it up and do it right away. It's a, just a part of the difference in, in how our wiring mm -hmm. goes emotionally. We have to recognize that there are, in fact, um, different ways in which we are we are wired yeah. as men and women, and we have to appreciate those differences. Not in a way to to, to make us compete. Not in a way to put one on Mars and one on, on Venus, but to help us to function properly and rightly, right here in this yeah, space that yeah, yeah. that we have given. And it's very important that we we understand and appreciate that there are differences. Men are not a form of. <laughs> women yeah. and women are not a form of men. They, those are distinct and important differences that are intended to make us function mm -hmm. in the one way. You see, God did not create another being and call that other being woman. <laughs> he takes Eve out of man yeah. in that sense. To recognize the, the 
inseparability. Yeah, the, the intricate link. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And dependency yeah. in some uh, yeah, regards yeah, yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. The interdependency, interconnectedness mm -hmm. between men and women. So, so the good thing is, and the amazing thing that God does is that, unlike the other creatures, it'll be one of that and one of that, but He yeah, takes yeah, yeah. that out of the other. Yeah. And and then men come from <laughs> in that in that con yeah, complementary it, it, sense that Paul talks about in First Corinthians eleven. Yeah. It's very very important that we recognize it and celebrate it for what God intended mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah, yeah if, if we deviate from that, and you made some points, complementing rather mm -hmm. than competing, mm -hmm. and loosely used, yeah. but because it rhymed, mm -hmm. completing rather than competing, mm -hmm. right? There is a sense where the differences don't divide us, or shouldn't divide, shouldn't divide us. us yeah. And I can understand the, 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 the perspective, though flawed, mm -hmm. of the men from Mars women from Venus. Yeah, the, yeah. the most typical, like every person I hear talk on relationships, mm -hmm. talk about the man and the woman driving past mm. um, ice cream shop. <laughs> Never knows. Yes, yes. And the woman turns to the man and says, Honey, don't you feel for some ice cream? <laughs> yes. And the man says, No, nah, man, we're good and keep driving. <laughs> and then five minutes down the road, the man says, I mean, oh, you're so, oh, you're so <laughs> unconscionable. <laughs> me asked you for ice cream a yes, while ago. Yes, yes. And, yes, and the man is like, when you, you asked me if me <laughs> yes, want yes, ice cream. Yes, yes, so yes. It, is, it is coming to an understanding mm -hmm. that women are different in, in the, how in they the express wiring. themselves. Yeah, man, in the wiring, yeah. And then being sensitive to mm -hmm. this. Not flaring up and saying, if you want ice cream, woman, just say you want ice cream. <laughs> you know, but it's understanding yeah, yeah, these differences yeah. and seeing where the differences are meant to complement. And and, in, and on the other side of it, the sister needs to know that he's not a mind reader. Yes, sir. <laughs> she needs to know. Even even though that's how she expresses it mm -hmm. herself, she has to also appreciate that he is not a mind yeah, reader. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and therefore, we, we, re we reduce attention when we can appreciate the differences in our world. Yeah, yeah. And we can't assume that because you have said it, then I must know that's what you want. Mm -hmm. you know? In fact, sometimes I might go and get it and you say, but I changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, and that does <laughs> adds to the issue. You know what I mean, why you mean you want it at the time you say it, yeah, you yeah, go and yeah. get it, but change remember, want something else, but want, but want cheesecake. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. So we have to recognize those those challenges too, in terms of just how the outworking is without making it adversarial. Yeah, and I, I think I think that point is crucial. Mm -hmm. Too often, the the wiring which this God has put in us mm -hmm. is dealt with as a conflict yeah right so what making of a sister from from yeah day one, yeah yeah <laughs> home if you know a woman say, and they, you get me yes, yes rather than just working with each yeah, other to say all right if god made us this way he must have made us this way for a reason a part, a particular part. right you mm -hmm. speak about the dealing with emotions mm -hmm. differently yeah, yeah and men well we think mm -hmm. that we are more rational and uh, more logical <laughs> yes. um in some regards yeah. so if we have these strengths mm -hmm. We need to work with the strengths mm -hmm. and see even the weaknesses in certain areas mm -hmm. as being answered by the strength uh, of the other, the other, the other. Gender. Absolutely, that's what God intends. Yeah. So that we we don't become animals. Yeah. Yeah. Because the animals don't have this. We are not made a little. We are not made a little higher than the animals. Yes. We are made a little lower than the yeah. angels. Some yeah. translations a little lower than God. Mm -hmm. You know, in that sense. So we have to begin to understand ourselves properly yeah. in terms of what God intends in creation. Yeah. And I think too often we miss it. And we see how the narrative unfolds, unfolds because of a misunderstanding of what intends. And we mm -hmm. see it in, in, in Jewish society. Yeah. We, see, we see it so clearly in, 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 the, in the laws, that section, the, the Pentateuch. Mm -hmm. And we see how it unfolds in the rest of Jewish history in that sense. The boy is valued more. Yeah. The woman is uncleaner longer if, mm -hmm. she, has a, <laughs> if she has a girl. Yeah. And, and all, of those, all of those things that that redefine how the relationship is and those are fed in from very very early mm -hmm. and even when new even when new covenant comes we still want to carry over yeah, some yeah, of those yeah. um, old covenant notions the idea of uncleanness the man is only unclean if he touches something yeah. um, in that way but a woman is can be inherently unclean mm -hmm. all of these notions come out of that misunderstanding and indeed the effect of sin yeah. and how sin has has discolored true indeed corrupted mm -hmm. the relationship and the understanding of ourselves how yeah. we feel about ourselves and how we relate to, to our sisters yeah and it, it needs to be fixed mm -hmm. it definitely needs to be fixed in our culture 
we see where I guess because we think women are well insignificant, really. Mm -hmm. You know, we credit them with child's birth. Everyone love their mother. If you want to be a big artist, mm -hmm. just do but a song about, about your mother. Hello, Mama <laughs> Africa. Just yeah, do yeah, a yeah, song yeah, about yeah. mother. Mm -hmm. But then we revere our mothers. Mm -hmm. At least it seems so, yes. but then the daughter up on the street side yeah, yeah. is, hey girl, come here now. Yeah. And if she ever don't answer to that, yeah. then it's pure, pure class up. Pure. Yeah. Right? And our culture, pop culture, there's a statement that I borrowed a research from you to mm. make a presentation. Mm. And I think you could make the presentation and I um, yeah. Yeah, filled yeah. in for mm. you. And in the research it says, show me who write the songs of a nation. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who write her, her laws. laws. Yes. And we are seeing that. Mm -hmm. The songs, most of the songs, primarily in our culture, mm -hmm. right? Apart from thank God for man like Barry Sam, and even mm -hmm. though he may have some little songs yeah, tonight yeah, yeah. again, mm -hmm. when go check one woman and come in, mm -hmm. and they must say, Well, I'm afraid to go in because you know, if it's stained, they put it, they put it, colors and them mm -hmm. kind of things. But the, the dance hall culture mm -hmm. really doesn't celebrate our woman. It doesn't. Yeah. It does not celebrate our woman. They are yeah. objectified. Mm -hmm. And primarily, they are objectified as sexual sex ob um, sex objects. Just sex objects for gratification. Yeah, yeah. Not even to please them mm -hmm. sexually, mm -hmm. but simply to gratify mm -hmm. our own desires. Mm -hmm. Right? How can we begin to address that 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 um, imbalance? Yeah. I, I think I think Bobby, if we if we go back to Jesus mm -hmm. and his own treatment. And his own interaction with, with women. In yeah. fact, one of the first cases we see is in John, in John 4 or 5, thereabouts, where he's encountering this Samaritan woman. Yeah. First of all, she's Samaritan. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he has no business talking to yeah. a Samaritan, and worse, a Samaritan oh, woman. Yeah. Then he's talking to a woman by herself mm -hmm. which you know the, you you holiness people shun the very appearance <laughs> of <Mama>. evil <laughs> so, so that alone should mean that jesus watch out you're in trouble yes you know it's a dangerous woman that <laughs> then as the story unfolds we hear that she she have five husbands no no this is a depth of immorality you know mm -hmm. what i mean um but we forget that that david had what eight women Wives. And not to mention Solomon. Yeah, oh gosh, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> but 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 we, we vilify her even now. In fact, if you hear most of the conversations about her, they are stories of a of a prostitute, of a bad woman, of, mm -hmm. a, of an immoral woman. Yeah, yeah. And I wondered to myself, what, what is it that made her immoral? Then Jesus says, Jesus says the man that you are now living with is not your husband. Mm -hmm. say, ah, see that? Yeah. And we begin to we begin to rip her. What we forget is that she has had five husbands. The man she's living with is not her husband. But we forget the stories about the seventh man in her life. Yeah. And that seventh man, Jesus, takes her story, mm -hmm. turns it around, dignifies her, sends her to evangelize. So that the men in the community come back and say, we believe not so much because of what you have said, but, but yeah, because yeah, you have brought yeah. us to Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus... Jesus lifts her, mm -hmm. and the, the, the Pharisees listening at the time would have been mortified. Yeah. Because Jesus and John, they are now using this woman as a testimony. Mm -hmm. In the culture of the day, the woman was, her, her, her word meant nothing. Yeah. They couldn't, they, uh, they couldn't testify she, in court. Um, or it meant, even court. if she came to court, it, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, it didn't matter. Yeah. But Jesus gave that back to her. In other words, Jesus gave her back her voice. Yeah. Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. It didn't say in the beginning was video. Yeah, true. So he gave her back her capacity to talk, to be heard. So it was now not little children are to be seen and not heard. Uh, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's women. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus says, I want to hear you. You mm. have a story. There's something that you must say. It's important and you must say it. Yeah. So Jesus, Jesus elevated the woman. Jesus gave her a voice. Jesus gave her a place in his story mm. in, a, in, a, in a direct way. Yeah. John says, I am telling you this so that you might believe. Yeah. And one of the first witnesses <laughs> that John pulls is, woman. is a woman. Yeah. The last witness that John pulls is she the is woman. Well, yeah. and, and, and that tells us that perhaps Christianity, above all the worldviews, liberates, 
elevates and transforms how women are understood and how yeah. they are to be treated. Yeah. I, I make no apology for that. That's why I'm, I'm proud to be a Christian in a time and in a space where there's this very wrong notion mm -hmm. about, about our, our women. It's very impor important. But as well, Jesus and the spiritual order. Yeah. Here's a girl that obviously does wrong. She's caught in the very act of adultery. Yeah. Now, the law says whomever is caught in the act of adultery is to be stoned. stoned. Yeah. Or, well, it says to be killed. It didn't say how. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but the point is... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they grab stone to stone her, and yet they forget that David committed adultery. Yeah, true. They forget. But that's not in their mind. It's a woman. And so they want to stone her. There's something that Jesus says that I find defining in the story. Jesus says, I do not condemn you. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, Bobby, that so many of our women live under condemnation. Yeah, true. Now, we're not, we're not, we're not seeing by any stretch of the imagination that her going to sleep with another man. Is permissible. It's permissible, yeah. that's what we're saying. But we are saying, can we extend grace to the girl in our church who gets pregnant. Mm. And the first thing we hear is not leave church, go have your baby and come back. None of those. Yeah. The first thing she hears is, I do not condemn you. Yep. What a difference it would make if she has that sense that that authority and community mm -hmm. does not begin her narrative at condemnation. Yeah. And it, 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 because of the masculine face of leadership, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is not just that it's leadership and authority. It's male. It's male leadership and authority yes, that yes. is meeting out this yeah, judgment yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And again, it may not be what is intended, mm -hmm. but a young lady who is backbenched, yeah. and even after the picnic barn, this young lady is still told you have to now prove Yeah. To the congregation and the Fru church fruits of righteousness yeah <laughs> and it does it really the this story of the woman caught in the act of we, yeah. do, we don't know if you want to breed or anything yeah, like that yeah, right because yeah. it could very well be that she was an unmarried woman mm -hmm. or a married woman and her man sterile we don't know the conditions mm -hmm, in which mm -hmm, she was mm -hmm. caught right so here is a woman who definitely bears the face of sin yeah and jesus christ comes to her and in his own words like you said mm. it was in video before yeah it is words word, that he used word, yeah, to, to show her the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we see the flip side yeah, in our, in yeah, our churches uh -huh. where words are used mm -hmm. to speak negatively of our females mm -hmm. True. from the pulpit a lot absolutely, of times. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. This nonsense that's going around now is really, I'm, I'm hearing, there's a man, that you'll, you'll have to remember the man's mm -hmm. name. Right, you're bright on me. Anyway, so, <laughs> but the spirit of Jezebel. Yes, yes, yes. Is the common treatment yeah, yeah, man. of um, sexual deviation mm -hmm. or sexual promiscuity, uh, anything that comes against the church right, sexually right, right. is normally, maybe it, again, it's because the face of leadership in the yes, church is yes, masculine. Yes, yes. So it has to be the spirit mm -hmm. of Jezebel. Yeah. Right? And, and nobody sees it, the spirit of diatrophies. Yes, that man. <laughs> Di <laughs> diatrophies. The Atrophy is much of the church and, yeah. and want power for himself and, and all of that and, 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 and was excluding everybody else because he was about power and control. Yeah. And it's the same idea, you know. Yeah, but man. nobody's calling it the spirit of diatrophy. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody says the spirit of Jezebel mm -hmm. because it's a, it's, a, it's a spirit that moves people towards control. Yeah. We, we, we sexualize it and feminize it yeah. because it suits our purpose uh, as well. Watch a girl as well, Bobby, who comes in. It may be one or two stories, depending on how you read the mm -hmm. narrative. She comes, and she's crying, and she's wiping Jesus' feet with her hair, and, yeah. and all of that, and, and people are watching. You know? What a sight it must have been. Yeah. Jesus says, Jesus says, lower. She's mm -hmm. pouring out. She's, she has saved all of this money, and she has bought this. This, this box of ointment, the stories tell us that it may have cost as much as a, a year's wages. Yeah, yeah. And she pours this out and people are upset. 
because they don't understand that here's a heart of a woman who is who is is so thankful to God for forgiveness. Yes. <laughs> it's it fits into the, our narrative of last week. Mm -hmm. We don't understand how women deal with being forgiven. Yeah. We we don't as men know how to appreciate True. it properly. And here's a girl, and Jesus celebrates her. Mm -hmm. We don't know her name, but this is what Jesus says about her. What she has done. Her story will be told yeah. with, with, with a passion story. A living testimony pretty much. Uh, absolutely. And we have to, and here again we are seeing Jesus celebrating a girl in the space of worship. Mm -hmm. Something that probably the men would not <laughs> have done because when the men had the opportunity to wash each other's feet, they refused. They frowned on it. They refuse. But it. this girl, she she walks up and, and she didn't put on a, a, an apron. Yeah. She used her hair, yeah. the thing most precious to mm -hmm. her, and Jesus celebrated her. Yeah. That's the difference. Jesus, who is always elevating, who is always celebrating, who is always who is always empowering women. And he does it as well, Bobby, in the even the way he did the parables. Yeah. One part that comes to mind is Luke, is the Luke 15 text. Mm -hmm. In Luke 15, we have the story of the lost son, yeah. the story of the lost coin, lost sheep. and the story of the lost sheep. Now, we are pretty clear in our minds in the story <laughs> of the lost sheep yeah. that the shepherd that goes in search of the sheep yeah. is the father. Yeah, man. And we are very clear. Well, the text says in the Luke that the father went he saw his son, son coming in far, yeah. and, and he runs to him. We are very clear as a father. Mm -hmm. Now, but when we go into the house and the woman is sweeping and looking for her coin, who is the woman? Can't be God, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and the, Pharisees were, yeah, the Pharisees were frightened. That's how we that treated God, them. Jesus is, is, is talking about God and using a woman. woman imagery. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was... That was revolutionary because Jesus always he used this this female stories mm -hmm. and that Jesus says in another place, the the sister from from Ethiopia, yeah, yeah. make her look bad. <laughs> and it's, what Jesus is not only using a woman, but he's using a foreign woman to make the a point. One from Ethiopia, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 Jesus used stories of women to 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 to. To point to the to the hypocrisy, to point to the to the hostility, to point to a kind of patriarchy that pushed hegemony in a way that was destructive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when Jesus began to tell stories and began to include women in the stories and gave women a leading role, mm -hmm. it was disruptive, but it was revolutionary yeah. so that people could see again what God intended for women in the relationship yeah. with himself in community and among themselves. Yeah. And we, we, we want persons to remember where we are coming from, mm -hmm. right? We are coming from the perspective that males and females are created to have dominion. Mm -hmm. If we deflate yes. the, 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 the worst mm -hmm. of one party, mm -hmm. we are deflating the intent of God. Of God, absolutely. And we cannot fulfill appropriately Purpose. the mandate mm -hmm. that God has put in the bosom yes. of males and females. No, no pun intended. No pun no, no, at all. <laughs> right? So it, it is. And even when we look to, to the Old Testament, we saw a yes. little bit of this as a hen mm -hmm. broods over her chicks, mm -hmm. so God watches over Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this obviously would have been resisted. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Because... No, I bet say like a rooster crow or yeah, whatever, yeah, a cock crow, or however yeah, you want to put yeah, it. But yeah. these imagery, they are there. Yeah. But yet still we see the accusation against the church yeah. as being oppressive towards women. Yeah, yeah. Um, primarily from maybe from a more of, of a North American and European perspective. Yeah. A lot of women have resisted the church mm -hmm. because it seems more patriarchal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in how it, it, it carries out its role. Yeah. You know, women are not celebrated, but you are here saying, we yeah, are man. here saying yeah, that Jesus Christ celebrated Woman, yeah, celebrated, elevated, yeah, um, 
saw them not as as sexual beings there, there's this narrative of of jesus and and mary magdalene mm -hmm. and jesus don't need that mary <laughs> magdalene don't need yeah, that yeah um and and that is again a part of the devaluing of the relationship yeah, between true. the two because w w men and women as e as existed between those two mm -hmm. had a relationship that had nothing to do with the sexual yeah the sec the, the, the damaged sexual component that yep. some people are trying yeah, to yeah. push that that and you hear it in in a lot of the da vinci ideas mm -hmm. Um, that they had a son living in France. All this kind of nonsense. <laughs> so, so we don't want to devalue this precious relationship. So she comes to the tomb. She's not even recognizing Jesus except now that he speaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word. And she holds on to him and says, Sis, don't, don't not yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, go. And that is the first go of the declaration of the mm -hmm. gospel. I am alive. She's the first one given that message to go and tell people that I'm alive. Yeah. Go tell my disciples and Peter. Mm -hmm. Tell them I'm alive. That was the first declaration given to a woman, not to a man. Yeah. And when we talk about even the idea of who are, who are the disciples, again, if you read the scriptures properly, there were a group of included. women included yeah, as disciples. Sure. And we, we keep on missing that mm -hmm. when we tell the story of discipleship. That discipleship is a place for both men and women. Yeah. You know? So we have to be careful how we are trying to present a narrative of women in church and women in ministry and women in relationships. Mm -hmm. Even how we describe marriage. <laughs> we tend to read Ephesians text, for instance, submit woman, woman submit. submit yourselves to yeah. your own husband the text doesn't start there mm -hmm. this text says submit to one another yeah. so there's mutual uh, the submission. mutuality should be mm -hmm. must be and how it is worked out yeah but we tend to to want to reinforce some of the things our church teaches or some of the things that we ourselves believe but why would a pastor <laughs> say so though like because <laughs> like, why why is it necessary mm. to carry this forward even in the face of good exegetical and hermeneutics from people like Clinton Chisholm, yeah. Dr. Delano Palmer. Why Uno Pastor still running with this nar narrative? Because, now? Why you <laughs> because with this narrative? the denomination says this is the position. <laughs> and when, <laughs> when, the, <laughs> when the denom says this is the position, yeah. and you go for your interview, <laughs> you and you, you want your credentials, you know, and so. you know, so the party line is this, <laughs> and they, they say, Robert, what do you believe about so and so, and they pull that particular oh, part of the creed, either, either line up, or, line. or, or do something <laughs> else, and sometimes that's a part of the thing. Yeah. In my case, in my own church group, I, when I was being interviewed, I said, brethren, here is my position, mm -hmm. I know what the church position is. Your choice is to take me with my position yeah. or don't take me. Thank God they say we, we appreciate it. We are not telling you that we're going to change our position because that's your position. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for those men who lead my congregation at the time who said thank you for being open yeah. enough yeah. 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 to say you don't believe how we have structured in respect mm -hmm. to women. But we are we are willing to accept you with your view yeah and what we did was to go back to the scriptures mm -hmm. and we began to look at some of the things and in fact where we started is not where we are today it's not even where i would like us to be yeah 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 but what i what i enjoyed about that particular group of leaders is their willingness to go back and look at this yeah, yeah which which is it yeah. has to be that hey man but i'm challenging brothers not only and and pastors in general not only to, to look at that but some other things that do make no practical or spiritual sense yeah. in how gospel is to be lived up yeah. and and go with a conviction of a hermeneutic that is consistent, mm -hmm. that is clear, that is defensible. Yeah. So that when when I am speaking, everybody knows I'm speaking with a with a clear hermeneutic that can be applied in a particular way. True. So I see it for what it is, I can assess it, and then I can work through it based on what you have presented. Yeah. And that's the problem I think in our church. It's not that willingness. There's more of a, a position, a, 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 a hunger and a lust to be in position mm. rather than to another another word. 
Hey everybody, I hope that you have just been enjoying this conversation and learning as well. Like we are not saying that we are there. Like Paul, we are saying, yo, we are stretched, we are yearning, we are pushed, we are strive. We are doing everything to reach that place where God would want us to go. And we have learned along the way. We have failed many trip-ups, we have left many bruised um, situations in our past as well. But we are saying we have learned the lesson. We are learning the lesson. We want to teach the lesson. We want to continue to teach this lesson as we learn ourselves how to be men of God. Austin said that, that you know, he is a man of God. And we are trying to say, people, we are men of God, but we are real men of God. We're not going to put on the facade. We're not going to wear the mask. We are trying to make sure that this thing goes forth and that this thing is said the way it ought to be but, said. But we're going to stop the conversation here. Because this conversation went on for a while, like we spoke for over an hour. Just two brothers talking and talking from our hearts and sharing some of our experiences. So we're going to stop the conversation right here. We're going to go now to Father Austin's insight. Big man Father Austin, come, come talk to the people. Greetings. I want to use my five and a half minutes not to preach and pontificate to the collective masses, but to preach and pontificate to those who would deign to preach and pontificate, including myself. It is not a cliche. Children live what they learn. Children learn what they live. Praxis. Please allow me to, 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 to say something that might sound counterintuitive to the project at hand. We talk too much. Yes, we. First person plural, including myself. We, I, them, they, he, she, talk too much. There is so much talk these days. Podcasts, sermons, motivational speaking, webinars, Facebook, Yap What, or is it WhatsApp? Just Yap, 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 yap. D did someone say TikTok? Everybody and them auntie is a vlogger. The average church goer hears well over 200 sermons per year. Now, Nehemiah is my favorite prophet. It is said he never did anything without praying. I never prayed without doing something. Praxis. Why is it with so many sermons and discourses and Bible studies and various social media proselytizing, we can't seem to reach the heart of the people? I'm an archer on a stone now or not. But is it that those of us who are doing so are doing it to boost resume a lot of preaching and not nearly enough praxis i do honestly believe that if we practice more of what we preached we wouldn't have to preach so much nothing is wrong with preaching it is the entree of the christian's spiritual diet but they have seen and heard it all. From the boardrooms to the church halls to the dance hall video light to the bars and even in parliament. The telling what to do, but not doing the telling. Trust me, people would rather see a sermon than hear one. Praxis. Hear the word of God in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord. Imitators of us. Can you imagine that? Imitators of us. The Thessalonian church was imitating the lives of the leaders because of the life they were living preaching and a whole bungle and container load of praxis. Think about it. You have people at a place. 
you preach to them. They say they are hungry because they really are hungry. And then they are told they can't get food for their bellies. No, star. No. Find some fish and bread and feed them. And don't take the escape route either, but you are going to pray for them. The only praying you should be doing is seeing grace over the food you have provided for them to eat. Praxis. I plead with you all to start practicing more the preaching of what it is to be real man, men, boys, males of God. Practice it. For God's sake, practice it. Let every little child to every great old man see your practice and imitate you in the way you Imitate Christ. That's the only way we can start to impact those present and forge ahead to shape the future generation. Our actions, our liberty, our display of earnest, spiritual, sincere manhood will engage others and shape the cultural landscape. Let me finish up my five and a half minutes with lines from an epic Christian anthem. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Blessings. Yo, Father Austin, I dropped some atomic bomb. The man I beg we not just talk the thing, but do the thing. Word is important. Word is essential. Our integrity means that our word, our words are our bonds. Right? But the man I say, yo, after we talk, we have to get up and make sure that so the action synchronize with the talk. Father Austin, big man thing. I love you, my brother. We can't say that openly without. No apology to no boy. Or no girl, no boy or no girl, right? But yo, very good, Father Austin. Until next week, this has been Ishden. This is a boy, Robert Green. Father Austin, big up yourself. My brother, pull and big up yourself. Boom! from heaven.